Hello and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Now uh, we're very pleased to announce that our Chess Sudoku app um, has been released on Steam and on the App Store. Um, so it's available. Um, it's not out on Android yet, but it should be imminently out on Android. Look, here it is. It's resplendent. It looks beautiful. We're very, very proud of it. And we thought what we'd do is that we would celebrate by showcasing one of the puzzle types that features in the app. So this is a King Sudoku. Um, now, how do King Sudokus work? Well, they're, they're fairly straightforward in terms of... Um, the additional rules. It's normal Sudoku, but if we have a look, for example, at this six, uh, and let's imagine that this, instead of being a six, it was a chess king. Now, a chess king could move to all of these squares, and therefore none of those squares can contain a six in the puzzle. So you can see that many of these squares are ruled out naturally by the normal Sudoku rules. In fact, all of those ones would be. But these squares also can't be six. And that's the important thing to remember about King Sudoku. And it, it leads to some lovely logic, which is why we included it in the app. Um, the app's also got, uh, of course, Knight Sudoku, which is a fairly well-known form uh, of uh, Sudoku variant. And shortly, we're going to update it with the Queen Sudoku as well, which is a... Um, that's quite a head-scratcher, to be honest. Um, we're working on the puzzles at the moment, and the way that works is that all of the nines in the grid um, have to be treated like they're chess queens. And, of course, a queen in chess can go all, you know, can go along a diagonal in any distance. So the way you have to organise the nines in the puzzle is to make sure that there are no nines that could take each other in the final solution. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's that's fairly tricky. Um, now, anyway, let's. What I want to do is to talk through this puzzle today. Now, have a go at it. Do have a go at it. You can have a go by clicking on the link under the video. That will take you to our software where you can play along. And in fact, let, why don't we start off with this six? Because the six rules out all of those squares from being sixes, which allows us to pencil mark some sixes in those two positions. The nines here, we can fill in a nine. Uh, the nines in those squares allow us to fill in nines in those positions. Now, one of the interesting things um, about Ch uh, King Sudoku is that when you can pencil mark nines like this next to an edge, this square could never be a nine now, because if it was a nine, obviously it would be able to reach both of those squares if it was a a king and therefore this one could not be a nine so something to look out for um, we can put nines in there must be a one in one of these squares now that means there's a one in one of those two squares at the top and with these ones that means we can place a one uh, so I don't know how much further we'll be able to go with ones at the moment so let's move on to twos um, now this two is surprisingly powerful look because it hits those two combine it with that two and all four of those squares can't be two anymore so we get a two up there a two here and a two here this one can't be a two because of that two and this one can't be a two because of that two that allows us to place another two in the grid and the final two on the right hand side Let's move on to threes. I'll put a three in the middle because of these threes here. Um, now, can we go further than that? You can see this three is quite a powerful three in terms of ruling out those, those squares, but this three rules out all of those three, which gives us a pencil mark. So, not seeing anything better than that. So maybe we'll look at fours instead. We can pencil fours into those squares because of these fours. That locks a four at the bottom of the grid. This four also allows us to pencil mark fours on the top left there. Look, add some more fours, move on to fives. We can, ah, now that's nice. This five here allows us to pencil mark fives into both of those squares. Um, which allows us to pencil fives into those two positions. 
Let's keep going with fives. I think we can pencil some in there. Maybe sixes now. See there is possibility of a six in all three of those positions, but these sixes allow us to place a six in that square. These sixes now force a six into that square. Now that allows us, if we remember, we can now revisit these three squares. And now we've got this six, we can pencil those in. Uh, <coughs> six must be in one of these two positions because of the sixes here and here. That gives us another six that unwinds this six now. Again, this is why we recommend pencil marks, or one of the reasons that we do. Once we see this can't be a six, we know the six is in this square, but in placing it, I'm displacing a pencil marked five. So I know that the five must be in the square above. So we can go six there and five there. So two for the price of one. That's going to be nice because it locks a five into those two squares. Now, this is another reason to use pencil marks if you get two digits pencil marked into the same two squares of a three by three box you know these are now a pair these are the only two squares that the numbers four and five can go in the box therefore you know the other square must be a three it gives us a three at the bottom uh, must be a three in one of these squares and a three here now look, we can now place the three in those two positions because of this three. This three sees this square by the king's move. So we can place threes there, there and there. That fixes the three at the bottom, look. We've got one and eight to place in those two positions. When I do that, I'm immediately... We have to remember with King Sudoku, not only to scan upwards and downwards, but also to look at this square, this square, and this square as well. Um, so it's a bit more work for your eyes. Uh, let's just check that now. So not seeing anything. Ah, we can put a seven in there. So moving on from sixes, let's do that. Let's look at sevens now. Ah, this seven's rather nice because that locks a seven out of those squares and these two. So we can go seven, five, Four, seven over there, unwinding the pencil marks. This square now must be a four. It's the only place a four can go in the block. That fixes an eight here, and that gives us a one. These two squares have got to be eight and nine. Let's pencil that in. And these two squares have got to be four and seven, which is resolvable because of the seven at the top fixes the four at the top as well that fixes the seven and the eight and that eight gets us into the eight and the nine eight here eight here one here now the ones look we can pencil mark ones into those two squares we remember we can't put one here because of the one that would be diagonally connected to it Seven and nine into those two squares is resolvable now because of the seven at the bottom. And this nine now is rules powerfully over these two positions. We can place the nine at the top, place the four next to it, finish off the nine and the five. If we look at where this five, this five sees both of those squares. This five sees that one. So this is the five and that gives us the one and the six as well. Therefore, we can place an eight in the middle. Move over to this side. That's a five, five and four. I think we're going to be finished. Ah, lovely finish though. Look at this. So we have a one and an eight pair, one and an eight pair. Now, ordinarily, you'd say this was a broken Sudoku pattern because the um, ones and eights, you couldn't disambiguate. Imagine there wasn't a knight's move constraint we could have a one here and a one here, or we could have the one here and the one here. Nothing else um, disambiguates which way round would be the intended correct solution. But here, this little eight, look, sees this square. So this can't be an eight 
and that allows us to know which is the correct order. So a nice puzzle, I hope you enjoyed it. We didn't try and make that too difficult today. What I might do if I get time later is to put up another video showcasing the Knight's Move um, constraint as well. So there'll be one of each type for you to play around with and um, uh, hopefully then you can have a look at the app which features lots of these puzzles that we've created for you. And uh, well, yeah, we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.